we're back here for day two of the five mistakes that small business owners make that prevent them or you from tapping into the trillion dollar government marketplace so if you missed yesterday's video you can go back and watch it it's there for you Going to be talking about growing big too fast everybody wants to get to the finish line i get it but we don't want you to grow too fast to where you can't handle it now if this is your first time here hello i'm felicia go ahead make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the turn on the notification bell so that you get notified when we drop new videos on thursdays and go live on tuesday now welcome here today especially because you're here part of the vlog miss 2020 where i'm dropping videos every day between now and christmas we started on december 1st so if you missed anything go back you can watch the replays and let's dive on into today growing big too fast so today i have four points i want to share with you guys so if you're taking notes you're going to want to write this down and if you're not taking notes, I'll write this down. Here's the problem I see. Like this, I don't know if this is the biggest problem, but it's a very big problem, okay? And this is where you're not positioned to push. You have to position your company to be able to push into what's next, to push into larger contracts. Because with larger contracts means you need more resources, whether it's uh, money to fund your projects or maybe it's people. So you have to position your company to grow, okay? You can't just jump from uh, $50,000 contracts to million-dollar contracts and don't have the infrastructure in place to sustain or to be able to deliver at that level. So don't make the mistake of not positioning your company to push, which means you need to be proactive in the resources that you're going to need in order to grow your businesses. I can tell you, wherever you're at in your business today, you know what it is, you know what level you're at, but whatever it is, whatever you're doing, whatever you have in place, okay, when you take it to the next level, understand the resources you have right now may not be enough, okay? So you have to position your company to push. And you have to do that beforehand. Another, this is a big one, is no systems in place. Like, this is huge too, okay? Uh, as you begin to grow and you start needing help, meaning people to help you, right? We all know that we're pretty good in the front office. We got it down pat. But where I see a lot of people fall is in the back office. And I always say, here's my quote, don't let your back office prevent the success in your front office. So what do I mean by that is the systems that you need to have in place in order for your business to function, in order for you to be able to deliver on projects, in order for you to get paid, in order for you to pay out what you need to pay out. It's all paperwork and processes, systems, paperwork, processes. Here's the thing. Again, wherever you are right now, maybe you're doing everything in your business. That's cool. A lot of us, we start, you know, one man shop or two people. And so we keep everything in our head. And it works when it's just us. But as you start hiring other people, you know they're not in your head, right? And so you're going to have to get it out of your head onto paper in a systemized format so that they can follow and execute and get the results that you want them to get that you know the system can produce okay so you have to have systems and processes in place around finances around operations around your employees independent contractors subcontractors label them whatever you want you need to have systems and processes in place those okay. are a few areas you can start focusing on right now to get those systems and processes in place. This is something I would highly encourage you to start implementing in your business if you have not.
Another area where I see uh, companies grow too fast is around capacity. Not looking at your capacity and understanding capacity and understand how much capacity you actually have. A lot of times we think we have more than we do, first of all. The other thing is as we start using up our capacity, using up our resources, the capacity we had when we were doing nothing is not the same capacity we have when we're working on multiple projects. So you always have to know your capacity. And as you grow, you definitely need to be looking at your capacity like all the time and always know what it is because if you don't, hence growing too fast will become a problem for you. Now, here's what I want you to do. Comment below. Comment below. Do you have a plan in place for your business to grow? Like, do you have the infrastructure in place for your business to grow? Comment below, yes or no, no or yes. And here's the last one, this is huge, this is huge. But before I share it with you, I do wanna share another story with you guys, just so you can understand about growth and what other contractors are going through because I want you to know that it's not just you. You're not alone in this. You're not the only one having certain thoughts or experiencing certain things. I want to encourage you guys through story as well as I share content with you guys over the next five days or I think it's four days left now. So I hope that's okay with you guys. Okay, so let me go back to my notes. So if you watched yesterday, you know I shared about Joey, but just like Joey, uh, Saul was very hesitant in getting into government contracting as well. But you know what? Here's something I find uh, funny. <laughs> Everybody that I run into where they're hesitant or they have fear around getting into government contracting, they always say once they're in it, I should have did it sooner. I wish I had taken action sooner. Too late. Here we are now, right? So we just have to move forward. But back to Saul's story. So Saul had just opened up a new office space prior to getting into government contracting. And so he opened up a new office space and then his goal was to get into government contracting. Pretty risky, huh? That's what I said. I'm like, okay, okay. You know, now we're adding on more uh, expenses, more liability, but we don't have the income to support what we're doing. So it was pretty risky. But it was Saul. It was pretty risky. Now Saul, after that, you know, he went through the roadblocks and, you know, some bumps along the way and things like that. But here's what happened with Saul. Saul was on the verge of making a big decision for his business. And he wasn't sure about how it would work out. Now, looking back and looking at where he's at now, I'd say it turned out pretty well. Let me share with you what Saul has been able to do since working with me in my uh, program. One, he was able to get his business set up in the government system. Two, he added more areas of service. Three, he received his certifications. Four, this is something I teach inside the Contractors Edge Bootcamp because it's really, really important, but he got laser, fo he got laser focused on his customer their preferences and their forecast three things who his customer was their preferences and their forecast game changer in result he landed two contracts not one but two one two so two. let's talk about what made a difference for saul so that you can see the transformation if i can walk you through it okay one of the things is Saul had goals and he had a strategy. He had a goal strategy. He also maximized his next codes. I see a lot of you guys having one next code or two. He maximized all the next codes that pertain to what he do. And then he didn't focus on government as a whole, but he focused on the agencies that needed what he provided. And that's something else I share more about inside the Contractors Edge Bootcamp because it's really, really important that you narrow your focus, especially when you're just starting out, especially when it's just maybe one or two people in your business doing this. You have to be laser focused. 
You have to have a game plan and then you have to work that game plan. Laser focus, work the game plan. He focused on the agencies that was buying what he was selling. Because you do know it's a lot of agencies out there, don't you? More than you could service, right? So you have to get laser focused. And then he implemented three pillars of marketing. Three pillars of marketing that I share inside the Contractor's Edge Bootcamp. He implemented those three pillars. Game changer. Game changer. All right. So let's get down to number four. And Saul mastered this just so you know. Joey as well. And all of the students inside the Contractor's Edge Bootcamp, if they listen to what I say, heed the word. This is what you want to be mindful of and you don't want to do this you want to do the opposite right this is a part of growing too fast is you're not selective in the opportunities that you say yes to okay as you start winning opportunities i tell my students this all the time in the boot camp that once you start winning opportunities more will come like the doors open up like the gates open up and the contracts that start coming in they're coming from everywhere and you're saying, yes, 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 yes. And you look up, oh my gosh, we've maxed out our capacity. We've maxed out our resources. And guess what? That project that starts in two weeks, we're not ready for it. You don't want to be there. You don't want to be there. So don't say yes to everything just to say yes, just to say you have won it. You need to make sure every time you say yes, you're able to deliver on your promise. Now, those of you inside the Contractor's Edge Bootcamp, no worries. You don't have to worry about that because I walk you through all of this that I'm sharing just to make sure that you are only saying yes to opportunities that is a good fit for you and that you have a chance at winning. So no worries there. Inside the Bootcamp, we make sure you're positioned to push. We make sure you know your capacity to perform. So no worries there, okay? So there you have it. There you have four things I shared with you guys, plus a story all around growing too fast. We don't want that to uh, make your business crumble, okay? If you build a solid foundation, you'll be fine. But if you build it too fast and it's not on a solid foundation, it may very well crumble, all right? So remember, you're just one contract away. Bye for now.